Hello, today we're talking about Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, the second movie in the Harry Potter franchise. Chamber of Secrets was also directed by Christopher Columbus, and so it kind of shares that childish tone of Sorcerer's Stone. This is my least favorite movie in the entire series, and it might sound like a bad thing when I say that, but I still like this movie a lot. It still had a lot of charm to it. The characters were played perfectly still. It was just my least favorite overall. And the one that I had the least fun rewatching. In the beginning of this movie, uh, Mr. Dursley yells at Harry for ruining his Japanese golfer joke and will do anything to stop him from returning to Hogwarts. You just ruined the punchline of my Japanese golfer joke. Sorry. But what was the joke? They never tell the joke. What? What's the Japanese golfer joke? I gotta look it up. Okay, um, of course you can turn to Reddit to find these things. <laughs> Here's a possible version of the joke. It's very long, so I'll just show it here for a second and you can read it if you want. Harry Potter, such an honor it is. Why does Dobby love Harry so much? No idea. Where'd he come from? What? What? Dobby just kind of like comes out of nowhere as this random elf and he's like, I really want to save you, Harry. You can't go to Hogwarts. Can someone explain this to me? Why? 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 He gets him in trouble with his step-parents, who already hate him, by dropping a cake on their guest. Like, Jesus. It's my nephew, he's very disturbed. Bye, bitch. <laughs> so Ron comes out of nowhere with this car and saves Harry. So I put a note here that just says, Ginny looks at Harry like she just saw his dick. I guess when she first sees Harry, she like freaks out. <laughs> The Weasley home is so cool. They put so many little details everywhere to make this into like a magic home. It's not much, but it's home. I think it's brilliant. Mr. Weasley asks Harry, what is the function of a rubber duck? And Harry never has a chance to answer him. So I will do the honors to keep babies and young children occupied and happy during a bath. That is the function of a rubber duck. You're welcome. There's a funny moment when Harry says diagonally. When he should have said Diagon Alley. What did he say, dear? Diagonally. I thought he did. And he ends up in Nocturne Alley. Nocturne Alley doesn't sound like Diagonally. So why didn't he end up in Diagonally? I'm gonna. <laughs> There's no town named Diagonally. <laughs> Personally, I would have liked it a lot more if the flute powder kind of backfired and sent Harry into limbo and he was just stuck there and it ruined the entire rest of the series. So yeah, Hagrid is wandering around Nocturne Alley and he runs into Harry, very convenient. So then there's a scene on platform nine and three quarters. Everybody goes through, but then Dobby hardens the wall so Ron and Harry can't get through. So I guess F's in the chat for any wizard that tried to board the train after Ron and Harry. <laughs> Unless of course Dobby made the wall normal again once they left. And what about the people who are on the platform and needed to leave? Unless there's a different exit somewhere. And I guess the Weasley parents didn't wonder where Harry and Ron went. Oh, Ron and Harry are just running a little behind. We're fine. <laughs> I know they're children. They'll find their way. And they don't go back and get them or try anything to reach out to them. They just kind of leave them there and they're like, all right, good luck, kids. So Ron and Harry have to take the car to go to Hogwarts. Later in the movie, Mrs. Weasley sends Ron a howler, which is like a bitch note. Their dumbass owl crashes on the table and Ron has to open this howler in front of all the kids. It's like a letter that just screams at you, literally screams at you. <laughs> Okay, bitch, damn, like, you're not gonna go back for your kid, but you'll send them a letter that will embarrass them in front of everybody? Cool. I like how they show muggles seeing Harry and Ron fly away in the car. It adds a little bit of realism, because obviously some people would see this stuff happen. Sometimes, at least. Especially when kids are involved, who are using magic just randomly. And Ron and Harry get punished for this later. Snape yells at them. So there's a part where Harry and Ron kind of fuck up, they're flying the car on the train track, like not above it, on it. And the train is behind them, so they have to like fly out of the way. Then there's a moment when Harry is hanging out of the car and Ron has to pull him back in. This is insane to me. This kid almost died and Ron didn't think to turn the steering wheel slowly so the car would turn like this and then Harry could just fall into the car. Instead, he reaches out with one hand and is able to pull him up somehow? 
It's so dumb. So yeah, they get to the school, they crash into the sock em bop em tree. And yeah, I guess the parents just forgot about their kids at the train station. <laughs> Later, we get the potting mandrake scene. You know the mandrakes? The plants that scream when they're out of the soil? Apparently, these are baby mandrakes. Little baby man. And the bigger ones scream so loud they kill people. Like their heads will pop or something. So they give these kids earmuffs, I guess. So while she's showing the kids this mandrake screaming, Neville faints. And Madame Sprout is just like, Just leave him there. Right, on we go. <laughs> Like, damn, do these teachers not care about the students at all? This movie introduces us to Gilderoy Lockhart. Kenneth Branagh played this role perfectly. Oh my God, did I hate Gilderoy Lockhart. This guy is such a douche. He was definitely the most hateable character in the entire series, of course, until Professor Umbridge. He decides to unleash pixies onto the class for his first lesson as a defense against the dark arts teacher. Everywhere that Gilderoy uh, intercedes or intervenes and causes some version of mayhem. I guess you don't have to pass a background check to become a teacher in the wizarding world. <laughs> like why did Dumbledore hire this guy? He fooled Dumbledore? Dumbledore didn't know that this guy was a sham? What? You would assume that Dumbledore wouldn't be oblivious to this guy's lack of ability. So yeah, this absolute moron unleashes these pixies onto his class, and he has no idea how to deal with them. He just kind of runs and hides once he does this, and they terrorize the classroom. I'm not sure how he kept his job after this. Why is this guy so sure of himself when he's casting these spells throughout the movie, and he's constantly fucking up? He's failing over and over, but then later in the movie, when faced with real danger because of the Chamber of Secrets, he decides to try and flee the school. Wouldn't it be more in character for him to try and rush towards the danger because he's so confident that he can do these things? Almost as if he's starting to believe the lie that he created for himself, that he's this big hotshot. I don't know, maybe self-preservation overpowered that at the end. So then Ron casts the Eat Slugs spell on Draco because he called Hermione a mudblood and it backfires on him and it's so gross. He's puking slugs and it's genuinely disgusting. I need to first start off by asking you about the slug scene. Was that just miserable or how'd you how, how did that work? Oh, I love that scene, it was really fun. <laughs> but it tasted quite nice actually. Later in the movie, Ron fails to turn a rat into a cup in McGonagall's class. I think this scene would have been a lot better if the spell backfired and he turned himself into a cup, the Ron cup. This is what he would look like. Is there no ref or safety team during a Quidditch match? Because apparently not. During the Quidditch match, there's a rogue bludger chasing Harry, which could have easily killed him. But I guess there's no ref or safety team to help, which is weird because this is the most dangerous sport in existence. If any sport requires a ref and a safety team, it's Quidditch. And guess who cursed the bludger to chase and injure Harry? Dobby! <laughs> this house elf is insane. It wants to kill Harry. This bludger could have easily killed Harry easily. But no, later Dobby's like, oh, I didn't want to kill you. I just wanted you to stop going to school because I wanted to save your life by trying to kill you. <laughs> and it's also kind of strange for Dobby to think that he would be forced to leave school if he was injured when they can literally use spells to regrow bones. They do it in this movie. Gilderoy Lockhart tries to cast a spell to heal Harry's broken bone. And instead, the spell just removes Harry's arm bones altogether. So he just has this floppy, goopy arm. Oh. And the nurse of the school can just regrow people's bones. So yeah, there's no way that Dobby could injure Harry enough to send him home if the nurse can do this. Just saying, like Dobby is dumb. So then we get the duel scene. Gilderoy Lockhart's like, oh, I'm a big hotshot. And he gets fucked up by Snape. <laughs> Time to du 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 duel! So Gilderoy suggests that they should have some students test their abilities on each other. And so they have Harry and Draco come up. The way Snape quickly turns around and points at Draco, suggesting Malfoy to duel Harry is hilarious. Malfoy, perhaps? Snape is so extra in his own strange gothic way. It's awesome. <laughs> 
Like he's always super serious and monotone, but then every once in a while he'll just like put in these little splashes of flair. <laughs> Where he like spins around. Draco summons a snake to attack Harry, which uh, by the way, pretty cool spell. I guess you could call him a conjurer. Wouldn't that be like his, his class if this were a video game? This snake is very ineffective by the way. It's like a tiny snake and it doesn't try and bite Harry at all, just kind of sits there. But then Harry starts talking to the snake, but I guess he doesn't know that he's speaking parcel tongue. He can hear what he's saying, right? Then he knows that he's speaking parcel tongue. But for some reason, this weird snake language can't be deciphered by the person saying it. You know, they just can say it randomly. And the people around can hear what he's doing, but he thinks he's just talking normally. I guess. In this movie, we learn that the password to Dumbledore's office is Sherbert Lemon. Sherbert Lemon. Yeah, you know, Dumbledore's on his king shit again. Harry has to go there because he's being accused of attacking someone. And of course he doesn't get in any trouble. In this movie, they have to create a polyjuice potion. And in order to do that, they have to gather hairs from people that they want to turn into. Ron, Harry, and Hermione want to turn into Crab Goyle and some random other Slytherin girl. And so their plan is to drug Crab and Goyle with spiked cupcakes. They float the cupcakes in front of Crab and Goyle while they're walking around the school. And they see them floating in the middle of the hall and they're like, oh my God, look, a cupcake just for me. This isn't weird at all. Food constantly just shows itself to us and we eat it. This is normal. <laughs> I know this isn't the cafeteria, but hey, a little bit of a sweet won't hurt me. So they start eating these random cupcakes. Obviously it's a trap, like this is so stupid. Ooh, random cupcakes for me to eat, yummy, yummy. Hermione accidentally used cat hair in hers because she got hair off of this girl's robes and it was a cat's hair. So she turns into a furry's dream, an actual cat girl person. So then Crab and Goyle start talking to Malfoy and we get a look at the Slytherin common room. I think this is one of the only times we get a look at it and it's pretty neat. I'm assuming Crab and Goyle still sound the same to Malfoy, but we hear Ron and Harry because if that weren't the case, then Draco would definitely know that these guys are different people. They sound completely different. They're acting different. You're acting very odd. It's his stomach ache. We then get introduced to the wonderfully annoying Moaning Myrtle. And Tom Riddle, the version of Voldemort that everybody wants to fuck on the internet. I'm not joking, it's weird. Hermione gets petrified in this movie. They had to create a fake version of her. And I gotta say, it's pretty convincing for a fake human. It's very uncanny valley though. They don't know who's petrifying people. But if I were Harry, I would suggest Dobby because Dobby's been trying to kill me <laughs> since the beginning of the year. So <laughs> seems like he would do literally anything to close the school to save Harry, even kill Harry. McGonagall even says that they might shut down the school because of all the kids that are being petrified. So I think Dobby would have had a much easier time shutting down the school if he just petrified a bunch of kids instead of trying to kill Harry. <laughs> Like what, try to kill the kid you're trying to save. Oh my God. Harry and Ron confront Hagrid about the Chamber of Secrets and they do so with the use of the invisibility cloak because they're not allowed to be outside after nightfall. Dumbledore and Cornelius Fudge enter Hagrid's hut. Ron and Harry are under the cloak so they can't see them. Ron starts talking at a normal volume to Harry underneath this cloak and they're a couple feet away from these people. Cornelius Fudge. Minister of Magic. Does the cloak remove sound too? I mean, it must, right? But Dumbledore knows they're there somehow. Because he's Dumbledore, he just knows things. Except when it comes to Gilderoy Lockhart, he was just completely fooled by this guy. <laughs> Hello. Hagrid's in trouble in this movie, but before they take him away, he indirectly tells the kids to follow the spiders that lead them deep into the dark forest and into their nest where a massive spider resides. Why spiders? Why couldn't it be follow the butterflies? Wow, cool Hagrid, this isn't dangerous at all. Yeah, nice. I know you're friends with the spider and all, but these kids are much smaller than you and they aren't friends with the spider. You could have easily just sent them to their death. I know you have half giant brain, but still use your half human brain, think. <laughs> and the best part is these kids are almost killed by these spiders. Their lives are only saved because the car randomly came out of nowhere and saved them. In this movie, if you look at the basilisk, 
that's in the Chamber of Secrets. You will die, it will kill you. But if you look at the Basilisk through a reflection or something else, then it will only petrify you. So every single student that's petrified in this movie just got very lucky, I guess. One saw it through a camera, Hermione looked at it through a mirror, and another saw it in the reflection of some water. So yeah, it looks like all these kids are putting all of their experience into the luck skill. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious how McGonagall tells people that they were never able to locate the Chamber of Secrets and they scoured the school when they have magic. You can use magic to completely take apart the school brick by brick and then put it together again. Easily, you know, but they just couldn't find it. And it's not like the chamber is tiny, you know, it's a pretty massive chamber that they just couldn't find. And it's hilarious how the entrance to the chamber is in the same bathroom where Moaning Myrtle was killed, but somehow the entrance couldn't be found by any of the witches or wizards when it was under the sink in the bathroom where this girl was killed. Like what? They didn't search the bathroom where this girl was killed? There's a pretty funny moment when Gilderoy Lockhart is about to be found out by the kids and he tries to use the spell Obliviate on the kids so they won't go talking about how he's a phony, but he uses Ron's wand and it backfires on him. And so he erases his own memory and he starts asking Ron a bunch of questions and Ron gets really annoyed and hits him with a rock. <laughs> Do you live here? No. Really? Uh he just bonks him in the head with a rock and knocks him out. It's hilarious. It's funny how the Sorcerer's Stone revolves around a rock, like a magic rock, and the second movie revolves around a magic diary. If Christopher Columbus really loved to make Harry Potter movies based around a magic object, then he should have taken up the mantle for the last two movies, right? With all the Horcruxes? I mean, he loves magic things, objects. The Goblet of Fire too, right? And it's so cheesy how Tom Riddle's name rearranges to I am Voldemort. That's how he came up with his name because it literally spells I am Voldemort. Oh my God. I also found it strange that the Basilisk has like really strong venom. If you get bit by one of these things, you're a goner, but it also can kill you by just looking at you. What's the point of the venomous fangs then? <laughs> to kill blind things like moles and Stevie Wonder. Harry gets extremely lucky at the end of this movie and manages to land a killing blow on the Basilisk with the Sword of Gryffindor. It has this wondrous magical hero ending, but it's not very believable. He kills the diary by stabbing it with a Basilisk fang. But the real hero of this movie is Fox, you know, the Phoenix, because he comes out of nowhere and blinds the Basilisk, so it can't kill Harry. And it also saves Harry by crying on his wound because Phoenix tears can heal. Damn. Harry is the luckiest kid alive and he will continuously be the luckiest kid alive. Harry tricks Dobby into receiving a sock. Dobby is free. And so that frees him and he fucks up Lucius who was his previous owner. It's a pretty awesome scene. You shall not harm Harry Potter. Skip it up and down. At the end of this movie, Hermione finally gets to act again because she was petrified through half of it. Hermione, welcome back. When all the kids cheer for Hagrid at the end when he returns from Azkaban, it's kind of bittersweet knowing that earlier in the movie, he almost sent Harry and Ron to their deaths. <laughs> Overall, yeah, definitely my least favorite in the series, but it had its moments. Moment. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you're interested, the links to all of the Harry Potter videos will be in the description, as well as the video that I made on the Fantastic Beasts movies, which thankfully remained monetized. I don't always lose. <laughs> If you like Harry Potter, you know, fantasy and sci-fi, things like that, then there's a good chance you'll like my clothing line, Alien Clothing, A-Y-Y-L-I-E-N clothing.com. We sell a bunch of really cool designs over there that I think you might like. So check those out if you haven't. That's A-Y-Y-L-I-E-N clothing.com. Thank you so much to all my patrons that make videos like this possible, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.